What's up, buddy? Mesozoic or middle life era. Life diversified rapidly and giant reptiles, dinosaurs, and other monstrous, monstrous beasts roamed the earth. The period which spans from a 52 million years ago to about 66 million years ago was also known as the Age of Reptiles or the Age of Dinosaurs. Mesozoic is defined relative to our particular section of sediment in Mishan, China. Or Meishan, not sure. Where a type of extinct eel-like creature known as a conodont first appeared. Mesozoic era, the Cretaceous Paleogene, Paleogene boundary is defined by a 20 inch, 50 centimeters thick silver of rock, sliver of rock in El Caf Denitia, which contains well preserved fossils and traces of iridium. Asteroid 
guess I was right. I knew I was right for Triassic and Jurassic, but I wasn't sure about Cretaceous. It's been a while. Life and climate. The Mesozoic era began roughly around the time of the end, Permian extinction, which wiped out 96% of marine life and 70% of all terrestrial species on the planet. Life slowly rebounded, eventually giving way to a flourishing diversity of animals. From massive lizards to monstrous dinosaurs, seen it. I don't even know if I pronounced that right. <laughs> Coniferous plants are those that have gone bearing seeds already existed at the beginning of the era, but they became much Mesozoic. Flowering plants emerged during the late Cretaceous period. The lush plant life during the Mesozoic era provided plenty of food, allowing the biggest of the dinosaurs to grow up to 80 tons. Mesozoic era was much warmer than today, and the planet had no polar ice caps. During the Triassic period, Pangea still formed one massive supercontinent. Without much coastline to moderate the continent's interior temperature, Pangea experienced major swings and was covered in the large swaths of desert. It was covered in large swaths of des desert. Yet the region still had a belt of tropical rainforest. I hate when it does that. Yet the region still around the equator. Extinctions. The Mesozoic era was bookend. Oh, excuse me. Was bookended by two great extinctions with another smaller extinction period. Around 252 million years ago, the end Permian extinction wiped out most life on Earth over a 
because the fossil record is incomplete, it's difficult to say exactly what caused the extinctions, or even how rapidly they occurred. After all, certain species or traces of catastrophic events could be missing in the fossil record simply because the sediments may have disappeared over tens of millions of years. Nature is very efficient at getting rid of its corpses. However, there are a few prime suspects in each of the extinctions. At the end of the Permian, the Siberian traps underwent massive volcanic eruptions, which most geologists believe caused the world's biggest extinction. Exactly how, however, is up for debate. The volcanic eruptions caused a spike in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere though a study suggests that the spike was brief. The eruptions may have increased sea surface temperatures and led to ocean acidification that choked out sea life. Another study proposed that the eruptions released huge droves of the element nickel, which fueled a feeding frenzy by nickel-munching microbes. Those microbes may have belched out huge amounts of methane, superheating the planet. at the end of the Cretaceous period. The impact would have kicked up so much dust that it blocked the sun, halted photosynthesis, and led to such a huge disruption in the food chain that everything that wasn't a scavenger or very small traps in what is now India were spewing massive amounts of lava both before and after the asteroid impact, and a few scientists believe these flows either directly caused or accelerated the dinosaurs' demise. Volcanism also be to blame for the end Triassic extinction. Though volcanism in general leads to global warming. I think I said volcanism. That sounds like Star Trek. Volcanism. Um, after an initial volcanic eruption, Huge amounts of sulfur spew into the air and cause a brief period of global cooling. Such cooling heating cycles may have occurred hundreds of times over 500,000 years. Similar cold snaps have been tied to huge crop failures in historical times, such as in Iceland in the 1700s. As a result, animals used to constant balmy temperatures in the tropics were wiped out, while animals that were insulated with proto-feathers 
such as pterosaurs or that lived at higher latitudes and were already adapted to big temperature variations did just fine. That is all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And depending on how many likes we get, um, that will decide if I do another video about this period. The next one will be Triassic, if you guys are interested.